I, I consider myself very privileged to be here. I'm in at the end of my second month and spending a year at the University of Central Asia uh, teaching. And if uh, for those of you who haven't visited campus yet, uh, I trust that when you do come to vi visit, you will be blown away by the investment that AKDN has made into the campus, uh, which is only superseded by their vision for what the university is to become. I, it's, uh, it's a great privilege for me to be involved in it at this time. Um, so this, uh, this presentation is actually about some work that one of my former students did, uh, Wayne Westerman, and I'm going to talk about the work that he did that was then adopted by Apple uh, and used to, uh, uh, to make the iPhone what it is, and that is the multi-touch interface. But before I get started with that, let me just mention that I was in Kyrgyzstan for the first time 36 years ago. And uh, here's a photo of me there. And m many people cannot identify me in the photo. Uh, so um, as, as, as usual, I'm the best looking one. Uh, so, um, so I really was in Kyrgyzstan, and I hope this photo proves that. OK, so now let me talk about uh, the work that my former student, Wayne Westerman, did. And Wayne was a genius. He was a boy who grew up on a farm in uh, western Missouri in the Midwestern United States. And uh, without what Wayne's uh, uh, contribution, the iPhone might have been just another Palm or Blackberry. And uh, what Wayne did really turned the iPhone into something world changing. And much of what I'm going to present here was actually discussed in a book that came out about two years ago by Brian Merchant. <coughs> Excuse me. And uh, the book's called The One Device. The Secret History of the iPhone. And uh, I, I, I thought I could add to this because I was actually there while most of this happened. And um, it wasn't that I was a, a contributor in any way. I was really more of an uncle to the process uh, of this work. So um, let me... Um, begin by pointing out that uh, during this whole period of time that Apple was not located in its new uh, facility, uh, which is also sometimes called a spaceship, it was, they were addressed was one infinite loop way in Cupertino, California. But I'm getting a little bit ahead of myself. Uh, let me point out that the reason why many of you maybe haven't heard of uh, Wayne Westerman is because uh, Apple is famous for putting a, uh, a, a lid of secrecy on everything that they do. And uh, so Apple really has prohibited Wayne from talking about his work on the iPhone. And uh, most of the information that is in the, the book, the, the One Device, uh, about Wayne was actually contributed by his older sister, and uh, and and then I can I can add a little bit uh, to that because I was with Wayne while he was doing most of this work. Now to begin, let me just point out here that the the work on the that Wayne did is actually in, in the public domain. It's uh, in his PhD dissertation at the University of Delaware. And this is the title of his PhD dissertation, Hand Tracking, Finger Identification, and Cordic Manipulation on a Multi-Touch Surface. The word cordic for Wayne refers to musical chords. The idea of using more than one finger at a time, uh, Wayne referred to 
as cordic manipulation. So that's where that term comes from. And just to prove that I was there when this happened in his acknowledgement, Wayne uh, acknowledges my contribution, which mostly was telling him, no, that's not going to work. Uh, this isn't going to work. You need to do it better. <clears throat> and uh, so when I think that's what he's talking about. Uh, in, in this is uh, my constantly telling him that what he was doing wasn't good enough, which I knew would frustrate him tremendously. And, and I hope maybe helped him do a better job. Now, uh, also, here's a photograph. I'm in this photograph. You might be able to pick me out on this one. And uh, Wayne is in that photograph, too. He's holding his oldest son. This photograph was four years ago. And uh, it's in his uh, house, which is, sits on top of a hill overlooking San Francisco Bay. In his living room, he's got two large grand pianos. He also, play, Wayne also plays the piano. And uh, so I first met Wayne at Purdue University. Uh, he did undergraduate research for me uh, at Purdue. And uh, his undergraduate research was um, on something that had nothing to do with the iPhone. But uh, before I talk, before I mention that, I'll say that he did graduate valedictorian from his high school. He was top in his high school graduating class. He got a, a full ride scholarship uh, to Purdue. And because he was a computer nerd, uh, he very quickly developed uh, severe tendonitis. It caused him great pain every time he had to sit down and type anything on his computer. So, uh, and that, of course, involved his programming, uh, caused him great pain. But Wayne did his undergraduate research for me working in the area of neural computing. Um, and what he was doing there was he was uh, trying to model the uh, brain waves in the, in the human brain uh, by looking, by using wave equations, trying to model the propagation of brain waves using wave equations. And uh, so he had developed an interest there in looking at neural networks. And this was in the um, mid-1990s. And he followed me to, to the University of Delaware, because I left Purdue at that time to become the department chair in electrical and computer engineering at the University of Delaware. So he followed me, but there was a fellow at the University of Delaware who was actually working on hardware for uh, doing hardware implementation of neural networks. That was Professor John Elias. And Wayne started working with John on doing hardware for neural networks. And uh, they, were, they were actually doing some great stuff. Uh, but during this whole period of time, uh, Wayne, was his tendonitis was getting worse and worse and worse. And uh, so at some point along the way, uh, he had, Wayne decided he was going to take some of this technology that they had developed for doing hardware neural networks, and he could modify it to try to develop surfaces for inputting information into a computer. Now, what Wayne wanted to do was actually lay both of his hands down onto a flat surface, and then he would use it as a keyboard typing, but there were no keys, and that uh, the computer would identify where you laid down your hand. It would then track the location of your fingers in, uh, in order to help you prevent making typos. It would actually track your fingers as they drifted across the surface. So this was Wayne's early attempt uh, at multi-touch. Now, what was special about this is up until that time, no touch devices for computers could track more than one finger. So just being able to track two fingers was an accomplishment. And Wayne had developed a technique where it could track all of your fingers on both hands. Now, he decided that something this sophisticated 
would, could be used not only for typing input into a computer, but by putting multiple fingers onto your surface and then moving them on the surface, you could do things such as cutting and pasting uh, in documents. You could rotate images and so on. And if, using multiple fingers to do that is what Wayne called cortic manipulation. Now, let me uh, talk a little bit about this because uh, Wayne was working on this and he got some money. For, he had a National Science Foundation uh, fellowship in graduate school. And uh, he uh, was working on this multi-touch interface. And here you're seeing an uh, image of one of the devices that he developed. And Wayne and John Elias, the professor he was working with, started a company uh, called Fingerworks. Now, this was back in the mid-1990s. And at that time, outside of Stanford and MIT, it was relatively unusual uh, for, for people at universities to uh, break off uh, and, and start companies. And uh, so Wayne started Fingerworks, but of course they weren't producing products. My primary contribution at this point was I gave them a corner in a laboratory that they could use to do their hardware development. And I, I told them that if this ever became anything real, and they made money from it, that he owed the University of Delaware something in return. So in a sense, I was the angel investor in this, in this but it wasn't my money, unfortunately. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me. So um, Wayne and John were working in a corner of an undergraduate laboratory, um, developing their hardware that became Fingerworks. And they started their company. And they developed several of these touch interface devices. Now, someone at Apple Computer saw one of their touch devices. And, and uh, this was the Apple's top secret project. They were trying to develop the iPhone. And the people at Apple were very smartly realized that uh, this was something that could make a big difference in what they were trying to do. So um, they went to Fingerworks and had them make a, uh, a large 8.5 by 11 touchpad, the size and shape of a piece of paper. And, uh, and then they took it back to Apple, and they laid the touchpad down. They put a white piece of paper on top, and they had a projector that projected the image down on the paper. So that was Apple's early prototype for the touch surface that they eventually put into the iPhone. Five minutes, OK. So, um, so at the Apple worked on this for about a year. They decided that they were going to use this technology. So in order to make sure that no one else got access to the technology. They bought Fingerworks, which included all the patents that, that Wayne and John Elias had, had, uh, had uh, written. So they bought Fingerworks, and then Wayne and John left Delaware. They moved out to Cupertino, California, and began working in the top secret iPhone project. And then I remember, I think it was 2007. Now, I since had left Delaware to become Dean of Engineering at Colorado State. And um, I can remember it was 2007 when Apple came out with their first iPhone. And I remember going to the store and picking it up and looking at the iPhone and uh, thinking, wow, this has got Wayne's fingerprints all over it. You know, as, yeah, a little joke. I got a better joke. Uh, uh, <laughs> And um, so, yes, so then Wayne, uh, after they, they, uh, the, the iPhone came out, it was certainly clear to me, and maybe to a few other people, that it was this multi-touch interface that Apple had, uh, had built into the iPhone. 
Now, of course, I will admit that I'm a bit biased on this, but I think it was that multi-touch interface that made the iPhone really what it is today. And that uh, everyone else coming out with smartphones has tried to copy it, and, uh, but I don't think they've done the same good job that, uh, that Wayne and John did on, on their version of it. Okay, so now with that, let me just close. I'll just add one more, one more comment about University of Central Asia now. Um, most of the time on campus up in Nareen, I'm the oldest person on campus. And uh, sometimes some people show up who are older than I am. And uh, the, uh, it, re it reminded me of a Kyrgyz proverb and the Kyrgyz proverb is that, um, that wisdom comes with age, but sometimes age comes alone. So, <laughs> so okay, so that's, that's everything I have to say. I think I finished pretty much on time. And uh, thank you all for listening to my story about uh, multi-touch and Wayne Westerman.